hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know, probably never. What I do know, this is 4F Beauty, my top is falling off of my shoulder again. And if I've done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. You will know from the a thumbnail, the title, and if you read any of it, the description. I picked up the uh, Made by Mitchell palette, the Feet on the Ground Pressed Pigment palette. So, if you want to find out exactly what I think of this baby, which colours I've chosen, what this looks like in glorious Technicolor, and of course what I'm going to blether about today, well then, my buddy, Sammy the Sloth Straw, confirms it is the perfect time to grab a drink, grab a snack, Put your feet up, get comfy, and enjoy. Because here it comes. Hey, welcome back from the intro. I'm probably just going to show you the palette in the intro. But, obviously it comes with this as well. I guess this could be used as a travel makeup bag, but obviously it's very slim, so it would restrict what you put in it. But then again, I guess I suppose it would help protect the palette if you're travelling. Not that anybody would take a palette this size. Um, let's get it unzipped. I was really surprised. I ordered this Thursday night at five past eight because he had a forty percent off sale. Because I wasn't going to bother. And then I saw the 40% off sale and I'm like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's got to be done. Um, so I ordered this Thursday night. As you can see, exactly the same print except we've got some holographic foiling on the outside of said palette or box. And we've got spot lamination, I don't know if you can see them, little M's all over it, which obviously you can't see unless the light hits them. Um, little message from him on the back, and the Made by Mitchell is in foil, actually so is his message, that's foiled as well. It's currently half past one on Saturday. This arrived 20 minutes ago. I am really impressed at how quick he got this delivered. So, open it up. Inside, exactly the same, front and back, which I really like because He's got the ingredients on both the packet and the palette, which means I don't need to keep hold of the packaging to know exactly what the ingredients are in the palette because it is actually on the palette itself. Oh, sorry, I think I laid awkwardly last night because all of this side of my neck and that muscle across the top of my shoulder is absolutely killing me today which is why I wasn't going to film but then this arrived so I kind of had to really the little plastic condom -y thing I don't know if you can see rather than being plain has actually got a gold foiled M on it if I hold it against my black shirt can you see that? that's pretty fancy it's got a lovely big mirror, actually a very good quality mirror as well. Folds back nice and easily, 
and I'm pretty sure everyone knows what this looks like now. In fact, if I put it this side, I can then put swatches up this side that I've just done. So, it's time for me to start playing. But before that, my usual disclaimers. This is a teaching channel, so I go at a speed partly because of my chronic pain but I go at a speed that beginners can keep up with and I don't cut out any of the blending so if it takes me a long time to get it blended you will see that it has taken me a long time to get it blended. I also zoom right in so that you only see my eyes on screen. This is so that if your eyesight's not that good and you watch me on a phone screen you can still see what's going on. I keep looking at my viewfinder because I'm trying to work out if I'm lopsided or not. I don't think I am, but you watch, I'll come to edit this and everything will be slightly on the kilter. Um, one of the trade-offs for having such a nice close view is that when I look down to add more pigment to a brush, change brushes, clean brushes, etc, you do get a lovely view of my hairline. You're welcome. <laughs> and the final thing is that a lot of people with deep set eyes like myself mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told that they have hooded lids. I'm going to insert a clip in just a minute so that you can work out whether you do actually have hooded lids or if you have deep set eyes and the workarounds for each eye type because the way you apply your makeup depending on your eye type will give you much better finish and longevity. That clip will be just my eyes on screen, please don't be shocked. Once the clip is done I'm going to be back to be putting some of these pigments on my eyelids and I cannot wait. Here's your clip. Now um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crime Pebble primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this, it is not affiliated, I don't earn money from it, but if you use my code you save, I think it's 15% and I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream but it has a powdery finish so unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes. I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. 
it's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid and close my eye you can see I've got as much if not more lid that tucks back away out of sight and if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open and it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush, sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow, so just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay. I'm going to start off with a big old floofy brush, it's a new one so it looks a little bit flattened but it's not overly, it is actually a round floofy brush. And I am going to go into you know I'm going to do greens, it's got to be done. And to be fair, a lot of this palette is green. Right, I'm going to go into Chameleon. Really, really soft. I noticed that when I was swatching them. Just how soft the shadow is. Reasonable amount of kick up, as you can see. Um, but that doesn't worry me because it just means I can go back in and pick that up to build the colour up or to start the other eye. Right, as always I'm going to be doing my Vini's Waltz blend rather than the windscreen wiper. Vini's Waltz is natural turns towards the nose, a fleckle when we get there and reverse turns to come back out again. The reason I do this is twofold. One, I'm 46 years old. Two, I've lost over 12 stone, that's over 200 pounds. Skin on my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers that have got the same issue. It can just be a genetic thing. And by doing the Viennese waltz, you are gently moving the skin of your eyelid in one way than the other without causing any additional damage. But it, you don't get that telltale sort of barcoding or tiger striping that you get where your lid is folded over when you just do the windscreen wiper. Okay? As always, I start on the outside edge because if it does deposit too much pigment, it's much easier to sort it out when your nose isn't in the way. And I'm going to start halfway between my natural crease and my brow. And I'm just going to start building this colour up. So how's your day been? Has it been a good one? I hope it has. And if it hasn't, well, then I hope tomorrow is a better one for you. And if you're at the start of your day, I hope it's as fabulous as you are, my darling. Now obviously greens are one of the most difficult colours to create 
<clears throat> so even if this wasn't a predominantly green palette you know my one of my first eye looks with it is going to be with the green because if you can cultivate or create a colour that is difficult to make and if you can make that one you know soft and blendable then the rest of the palette's probably going to be the same I mean you can see that it's built up slowly but then I've not been putting very much on the brush because given how soft they are when I was swatching them I mean in some cases I was kind of doing I, when I'm doing a swatch I do one circle in the pan and then do one stripe on my arm and in some cases as I was holding it over my arm some of the pigment was falling off so I knew there was the likelihood of fallout was going to be quite high if you overload your brush which is why I'm not putting much on my brush at all and I'm just choosing to do more blending and building the colour up. As I said, I wasn't going to get this because I don't, I don't normally go for big palettes now. I'm, I much prefer smaller palettes. Um, but I did like the look of this colour scheme for this one. I liked them both, to be fair. But obviously the green one called to me more because green, purple and blue are my favourite colours to put on my eyes. But especially the green and the purple, you know, it's... That's my jam! I'm so sorry. I'll try and refrain from saying stuff like that again. Um, And I was like, I am not paying 40 quid for a brand that I don't know what it's like. I thought, oh, I'll wait and see some, some reviews from people that I trust. Um, you know, not people that have got it in PR. Not that you can't trust people that have got it in PR. Because I've actually had two different palettes from September Rose as freebies or PR. <clears throat> the brew and the slush too. But I'm so awful at bloody lying. If I didn't like the palette you would know from the expression on my face. Um, you know, but I think with a lot of the bigger channels there is a an expectation of them on them to support you know other people in in the industry and to perhaps not necessarily give it a glowing review if it's shit but you know either not film with it or film with the colours that are easy to use or cut out some of the blending you've had to do just to show in a better light so I thought oh, I'll wait until some of the smaller channels that I trust have used it a bit um, before I decide it's worth spending 40 quid on and I happen to be scrolling through Instagram Thursday night as you do and uh, I saw Mitchell promote that from 8 o'clock that night he was doing 40% off on his site and I'm like, ooh, 40% off of 40 quid, that's like 24 quid, that's that's less than a pound of shadow because there's 25 shadows in, in the thing, so I'm like, yeah, I'll have some of that. I'm just cleaning the brush on a clean washcloth, if you're wondering what that noise is. <clears throat> We also apparently have a bird clicking around on the bathroom roof. So if you're hearing scratching and clicking, that's probably the local magpies. I've noticed they've been back again recently. 
Right. Using the same brush. I am going to go into... I think greener, sorry where it's foiled, it's not that easy to see. I'm going into greener on the bottom row, which is a slightly deeper khaki. As hopefully you can see. Now I'm just going to pop that just a fraction lower. And do the same thing across and back again. Just to help build the colour up. It's actually slightly yellower as well as being a tad darker. I do struggle here and here both sides. I get um, dry patches, almost like um, eczema, so it can make it quite difficult sometimes to blend shadows just there, but that's actually blending quite nicely to be fair. I mean, it looks like you've got a faint bit of Patching just here in the camera, but when I look at it in the mirror, it's absolutely fine, there's no patching there at all. Bizarre. One of the problems of filming in 1080, I guess. The camera sees more than your eyes do. The reason I do each colour one at a time on both eyes is because your eyes are not symmetrical unless you photoshop them like a certain guru whose whole career is based on a lie does um, and particularly with my fibro I can get quite swollen um, random areas of my body will swell hands, feet, legs um, and also my eyelids, bizarrely. I can have days when one eye almost looks like I've got punched in it, where it's so puffy. And that, of course, changes the physical shape of your eye. So when you're applying the makeup, it's always wise to sit back and just relax your brows and just check that the shapes are the same both sides because if you have got a discrepancy you may have to do a slightly different shape one side to the other in order to get them to look the same when your brows are relaxed and if I've already piled all the other colours on top I may not necessarily realise which colour needs the adjustment so that's why I do rather than just doing one eye and then going, right, I'm going to do the other eye off camera to save time. Yeah, again, this looks like it's going patchy just here. But in my mirror, it's absolutely fine. Once the film goes up, I do put the colour photos up. I tend to put black and white ones up before the film goes live. Um, and then I'll put colour ones up afterwards. So you'll be able to see from those that there's no issue there because I don't use, unless it's an obvious Snapchat filter like I've got horns or you know elliptical pupils or something. Um, the first 
sort of four or five photos are always unretouched. The most I'll do is brighten them up a bit if I've not got much daylight. That one stained my brush. Right, I'm going to go into one of my smaller blending brushes now. So if I show you the head, the size of the head, whatever the width of the head, that's how far out it's going to blend the shadow. So you can see I've gone for a much, much smaller one this time. This is one of my Blush Tribe ones with the crystal handles. Um, I'm going to try Earth Child, but it might not be a deep enough colour, but it is the third khaki on here, and it is the deepest of the three. So I'm going to try this first, and if it's not deep enough, I'll either add some brown or black to it, or I might go across and use Venom instead, which is a deep teal. I'm just going to start off by just popping this just on the outer corner here. Oh no, it's deep enough, isn't it? Yay! So I'm just really buffing this. If you've moved your crease, now is the time to follow wherever you've moved your crease to. And I'm really, really buffing this because I want it to be really blown out and smoky. And run a little bit of that onto the outer corner of the mobile lid as well. And then whatever's left on the brush. I'll drag through in a windshield wiper and then just Viennese warps it on the way back so that we don't blow it too far up the eye. Can you see the definition that that has given the eye? This is why if you're going to move your crease it's always wise to put a deep colour wherever you've moved your crease to because Deep colours obviously go back and bright colours come forward so it adds to the illusion that that bit of your eye is folded back in and is further away. And obviously I'm holding my brush right at the end. If the handle's long enough I brace it against my palm just to give me a bit more stability at the other end. And you can see this is blending on really nice, really nicely. Again, drag some of that onto the outer corner. And then drag it through. And the knees warps it back. Now with this eye, when I'm putting the colour onto the lid, because of this super deep creasing I've got here, I do have to do the thing that I tell you not to do which is that I stretch my lid out but I do it in such a way that I cause as little additional damage as possible to the lid but I will demonstrate that when we get to that point I like this, I like this a lot. And so far, I've not really had a problem with any of them. That's good to know. <clears throat> right, I'm going to go with a lip brush do the shimmer because you can get right into the corner there without um, <coughs> without smudging it. 
Now obviously you never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush but I do always wet my brush afterwards just to sort of make it a little bit easier in terms of minimising fallout etc. Um, you can use anything to wet the brush once you put the pigment on it. Uh, Moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. Um, this is a, a fixing spray. You can use a setting spray, a priming spray, a finishing spray. You can even just save an empty bottle and put some water in it each time you start your makeup. Uh, I now need to decide what colours I'm going to use, don't I? Right, I think I'm going to start off with Limeade <clears throat> in the inner corner. Now, first time I use a palette, I don't use glitter glue and I don't do a cut crease because I want to see what the opacity is like from the actual pigment itself. Right, this ferrule is now wet, so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckles and just spin. Because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening the bristles, otherwise we'll, uh, we'll have a stick, not a brush. Okay, so I'm going to go into the inner corner here and just... Pull that along the first third of the lid. Okay, that's lovely. Just dry the brush off. Reload it. Rewet it. Right, now I'll show you what I do with this eye. Uh, mark out how far I need to go. And then gently stretch the lid out, only as far as it takes to straighten those creases out. Because I've found from experience, if I don't do this, rather than the pigment blending onto the lid the way it's doing now it packs loosely into those creases then as it dries through the day it falls into my eye and down my face which A is painful and B ruins your makeup and then I'm gently letting go once I've dry the brush off pick up a little bit more pigment Just to do that out a bit there. Okay. Clean the brush. And now I think I'm going to go into Ain't. <laughs> no, because I'm going to go into Grass because Ain't is a mat. I'm going to grass. There's there's two shimmery greens, which when you swatch them, depending on the angle that you then look at them, they can look very similar. But this one, grass, is very much khaki, whereas Mama's Garden is definitely more emerald. I'm going to apply this to the kind of middle third of the lid. And just gently use the tip of the bristles to blend it in with the mat on the edge there. And then just lightly buff where the two shimmers meet. Get a nice blend, and I think I might actually have enough on here to do this side as well. Yep, 
you can see this lid moves an awful lot more than the lid on my other eye does. And that's because of the damage done when I was, you know, five years old at the ophthalmic hospital. So that just goes to show you damage done all those years ago can show an effect 40 years later. I'm just going to grab a little bit of limeade. Just want to pack a little bit more. on that inner part there. There we go. Right. Got to admit, really liking this so far. Right, my lovelies, I am going to pause you and I'm going to go and pop some base makeup on, you know, foundation, etc. And I'll be back to finish off this eye look with you now. I've got a bit of work to do now, but for you, my darlings, it's going to be absolutely blooming instant. So I'll see you right after this wibbly wobbly bubbly blendy bit. Yeah, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. <coughs> oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Hello. I am back. As you can see, I have done my brows with the Earth Child shade, which is this deepest green that I put through the crease. Right. Now, I know this next part is my mate Will's favourite part. So, flat topped brush, and I'm going to go back into Earth Child. And I'm going to pop this along the lower lash line like a seal yes I'm flinching this side but I'm blinding that eye and I'm relying on a viewfinder that's far too far away when you haven't got your contact lens in. And regular viewers will know how many times I've poked myself in the eye. Even the good eye that's got peripheral vision. Let alone the one that hasn't. Right, I'm going to go in with this brush now, this is the, the the brush from the Tarte Graveyard Girl palette, it's flat topped and chunky and it's just perfect for getting underneath your lower lashes but you can use any kind of chunky smudger brush really. Um, I think I'm going to go into Chameleon, the first shade that I used. And use that just to really buff out that lower lash line. I could have gone for some different colours on the bottom and tested more of them out than just the, the three mattes and two shimmers that I've done so far. But I'm really liking this look and didn't want to risk buggering it up by choosing something that may not have worked. Down to now. I love getting it good and sort of grungy on that bottom lash line. Especially on days when my eyes are too sensitive to put any kind of liner in. It just finishes off that bottom line perfectly. Right. I'm going to grab, I've got this new highlighter from Spectrum, the Zodiac Sunray one. don't know if it's called anything else but Sunray. 
I think it's just samurai. But it looks like that. And I'm going to go into just the white bits. This is an odd lip brush. I'm just going to go into the, the white bits here. To go up under the tail of my brow. And I'm going to go into the palette and dip into Fool's Gold, I think. Or should I do Mama's Garden? No, I'm going to go into Mama's Garden, which is the other sparkly green, the one that I said is more of an emerald green. And I'm going to use that for the unicorn, because there you can really see the difference now between this khaki shimmer and this emerald green one that I'm just going to bring round and just blend into the lower lash line a tad just to give a little sump sump I like that I might go over it with a little bit of fool's gold actually Yes, now we're talking. Look at that. Oh, I like. Mm. Right. I'm going to pause you for one last time. I'm going to put some mascara on. And some lippy. I'm going to put that sun ray highlight on my face. Do something with my hair, which is an absolute wreck right now. And I'll be back with my finished look and my first impressions of this palette. So, you know, don't, don't go anywhere. I am back. As you can see, I have put that highlight on my cheeky boos and my nose and my top lip and my chin and anywhere else I felt like it really. <sighs> Mascara today is one of the sample or deluxe size samples that my friend Hedda sent me. This is the Clinique High Impact Mascara. Lippy is my Uoma Angela because well, it has to be done really and because I think it's a nice I was going to get my Camelicious and put that on but I think khaki lips and khaki eyes I didn't want to detract from the eyes so what are my first thoughts on this particular palette I like it <laughs> um, the mattes blended really nicely and khaki green is not an easy colour to to create um, the shimmers went on really nicely really opaque uh, negligible fallout so long as you tap your brush off um, yeah I'm very happy especially at 24 quid I'm happy um, I think if, if you've already got, like I have, you know, Gemini and Sci-Fi from Kaleidos and, you know, you, you, uh, you may not need this. I didn't technically need it, I just wanted it. Um. <clears throat> that being said, I am glad that I have got it because I really, really like the finish. I will of course continue to use this. If there is a specific colour in here, if you say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 
if there's any specific colours in here that you want to see me use, let me know in the comments below and I will do my best to film something for you. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm actually really pleased with the finished look. Very happy indeed. So, if you are one of my 4F babies, please double check you're still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing you all at a rate of knots. Um, but they're leaving my films in your suggested or recommended titles. So it's not that obvious that you've actually been um, removed from the family. And I miss you, my darlings. I miss every single one of you that goes. Um, it's also worth, I mean, they seem to have stopped sending emails at the moment, but in the hope that they restart, you might want to check your notifications because mine on every channel that I'd got notifications set for had been knocked back to personalised instead of all. So if they did restart sending emails, I wouldn't have got them where it was personalised because you pretty much don't get any when it's personalised. Um, if you're new here and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, this is, is pretty much what you're going to get on this channel. Uh, me playing with makeup blethering on about everything and nothing in particular in what I'm told is quite a soothing voice so if that sounds like your kind of thing it'd be awesome if you too would like to join the 4F family we are the nicest family on YouTube super easy to do hit that red subscribe button then you ring my bell ring my bell and choose all notifications in the hope that they start sending emails again. Right. In the meantime, if you've got some spare time, then I've got an awful lot of other films that you can check out. I've got product reviews and tutorials like this one. I've got collabs, challenges, tags. I even read you my favourite poem in one of them. So, you know, as I've said, for what feels like forever now, grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up, get comfy, and indulge for a bit. What better way to chill out than watch me play with coloured pigments? <laughs> right. My lovelies, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.